Hello everybody, in this video we're going to go over errors and what you'll need to know for the APCSB exam. We'll also have some practice questions. Alright, let's get going. If you're only looking for those questions, please skip ahead now. So for the exam, there are three types of errors you need to know about. They are syntax errors, runtime errors, and logical errors. There is a school of thought that says, do I really, really need to know the difference between these three? After all, they are all just bugs, and bugs are bugs. It doesn't really matter what type it is. But as we all know, if the AP board says it's important, then I guess it must be important. And here's your proof. These are practice questions that the AP board publishes for the create task. So you could potentially be getting this kind of question on the create task portion of your AP exam. Here, they're asking you to put a fake runtime error into your code. And if you don't know what that is, you can't answer the question. So it's super important that you know the difference between a syntax error, a runtime error, and a logical error. So to review it all, here I have a chart. Syntax errors, they will never ever run the code. And in fact, the code crashes before it ever starts. So a language like Scratch, which is block-based, has no syntax errors. It will never have an error that breaks the rules of the language so badly that it never ever even starts. On the other hand, a language like Python can definitely have syntax errors, missing quotations, missing parentheses, typos, missing colons, missing indentations, stuff that breaks the rules of the language so badly that the code does not even start to run. For the APCSP exam, be sure you can recognize these and even create these in your code if you had to. So syntax errors are the first type of error. The second type of error is a runtime error. In a runtime error, your code will start, but then it will crash. And because it crashes, you don't know if the code is correct. Scratch has a feature where it skips bad code that would crash other languages. So you don't see runtime errors as much, but it can happen. If I have an infinite loop, I can run out of memory. So in these two examples, I'm adding numbers to a list forever, or I'm adding characters to string forever and these will both crash Scratch. If I make a list or string infinitely long, I need memory to hold that information, and eventually I'll run out of memory. Python runtime errors, if you've programmed in Python, then for sure you've had these. You might have had a name error, where you've typoed the variable, or maybe you've tried to use the variable before you set the variable. For sure you've had index errors where you go outside of the list. Here I have zero, one, two, three, and I'm trying to print out four. Remember lists in Python start with zero. This is a very, very common mistake. Or maybe you try to join or concatenate an integer and a string. Remember, you can only join or concatenate strings and strings. So these errors, they have specific names like name error, index error, type error. You will not need to know that for the exam. Just remember, all these errors fall under runtime errors, which are the errors you get when your code starts and then crashes. But with that said, you should try to remember a few of these at least. So if you need to create them for the exam, you are ready. The last type of error is the logical error or logic error, where the code runs just fine, but it gives you the wrong result at the end, and you are clueless as to why that is at first. And here are some ways in which this happens in Python. You can have an incorrect Boolean expression, so you have maybe a less than when you should have a greater than, or you forget the equals to. You can use the wrong variable. This happens all the time. And when you're learning functions, incorrect indentations will all the time screw you up. The thing that all of these have in common is that your code will not crash. It looks like it works, but it really does not work. And I'm going to skip over scratch logical errors because they're pretty much the same thing. To sum up the goals, you'll definitely want to be able to recognize different error types. And in addition, based on this practice question from the AP board, you should be able to add runtime errors or logical errors to your create task function code. Alrighty, here are some practice questions. Question one, I try to run my code but it never runs and crashes right away. This is most likely an example of the following. So I will pull up my handy dandy chart. I'm going to see a syntax error is the one that never runs and crashes right away. So my answer is syntax error. If you program in languages like Scratch, you don't have syntax errors because the blocks take care of all that for you. But if you program in a language like Python, this would be an example of a syntax error. Here, I'm forgetting to put in the second quotation mark. That is a syntax error. Breaks the rules of the language, and the code won't run at all. Question two. My code started to run, and the code crashed halfway through. This is most likely an example of the following. So I will pull up my handy dandy chart, take a look, and I see a runtime error is when the code starts, but it crashes. 
So the answer is C, a runtime error. If you're programming in a language like Python, an example of a runtime error is if I don't set my variable, but I try to print out that variable. The code is fine because it follows all the rules of the language up until the point it tries to print out this variable. It has no idea what this variable is, and then it crashes. Question three, my code run, but gives an unexpected wrong answer. This might be from the following. So I will pull up my chart one more time. I'll see that logical errors will run, but give the wrong result. So my answer here is one. But if I remember from before, I also know that my answer can be three. And I'll show you how in a second. If you're wondering what a logical error might look like, well, in Python, it might look something like this. If I say, if x is less than zero, I'm going to print out x is positive. That's wrong because my sign is wrong. So it's going to give an unexpected wrong answer. That's a logical error. Here's an example of a rounding error in Python. This will print out what? 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 is not equal to 0 0.3 in Python because of rounding errors. And that is probably an unexpected result. So our answer here again is one and three. Question four, this code has an error. The type of error is this. So if I look at this code, it looks like it's trying to loop 10 times, but it's missing a really important piece of code. And that is, it needs to have the counter increment or go up. So hopefully you've seen this kind of problem before in your works. This will be an infinite loop. If I pull up my chart, I'll see that the code will run, but it will not give the correct result. So this is a logical error. So this is an example where it's going to be a little bit harder, where you're going to have to try to debug the code that's there, but you'll want to be able to do that. Finally, question five. This code has an error. The type of error is this. So it displays, hello, everybody. And once again, it's trying to do a counter count 10 times. And this time it does have the counter increasing, but I have another problem and that is this. What does counter start at? And the answer is it's not set at all. So the code's gonna work up until it hits, repeat until counter is greater than 10. It's not gonna know what counter is at all. So it won't be able to make this comparison and then it will crash. So if we pull up the chart, the kind of error that happens when the code starts, but doesn't finish is called a runtime error. So this is a runtime error or C. Now, I've asked this question, assuming that you're programming in something like Python, Java, or JavaScript. If you're programming in Scratch, variables are automatically initialized to zero. So this code will actually work just fine the first time you run it, but the second time you run it, counter will be 10, and the loop won't run at all. And I guess you could call this a logical error. But again, in this question, I've assumed, for better or worse, that you're programming in something like Python, Java, or JavaScript, where you have to initialize variables before you use them. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.